Andrew Armstrong and welcome to the Back Office show. Yes, it's finally a real show, as in kind of once a week with a script and edited. And it's been a really strange week for me because this is the first week without producing those videos every single day. Bang, 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 bang. But don't worry, all of the time that I'd normally spend documenting every single second of my life has been taken up with work and family commitments. The funny thing is though about editing those videos in that it's actually taking a lot longer because you still have to make pretty much the same sort of content that you'd have made over that whole week but now you're culling it, cutting it down and trying to fit it into sort of like a 20 minute, 30 minute, however long this video is going to end up a uh, video. So in a bit to create this video I spent the week actually trying to catch up on many other projects so that I could produce content for it. Unfortunately I ended up failing in most of those. I produced a diary. <laughs> Monday, I've been responsible for getting charge into the first Tesla Model 3 in the UK. However, I do not have the correct cables or UMC, so I set about hacking it. I fail. However, in the process, I do learn the pinout and sensing secrets of the Tesla 3 charging plug. Tuesday, I was too harassed to do anything productive in my free time, so I investigated aftermarket walnut whip. Wednesday, attempted to film a sponsored video for a dash cam that I've been really lazy with. I discovered that despite my best efforts, all the SD cards I had were either corrupt, too slow, or just didn't work with the thing, so I thought I bricked it. I'll have to revisit that in the future, and it's a shame because it's a rather nifty looking dash cam. Thursday, thought I would do a massively fun video on hard disk platters by opening them up, running them and doing bad things to see how long it takes Windows to discover the corruption on the disk. Ironically, the one I tried was already a bit dead so wouldn't play along. I got bored and I scrapped that video. Friday, managed to get out and visit Neil over at the Retro Man Cave. Had a nice chat, a few games on the Amiga 32 and most importantly, he made me this rather nifty mug. I shall use it for miso soup. I reminded myself that our boiler is on the blink again and despite having this roaring fire, loading it up with fuel every hour is going to get old very quickly. Time to get the tools and service this brute. However, it's not all doom and gloom. I did actually get a nice bit of post, so let's have a look at that. All the way from China. Bang! Oh, there's more. We have here 10, <laughs> it was 10 for like, I don't know, two pounds, clip-on ferrites. This one, uh -huh -huh, is a very interesting one if you're interested in your cars because this is a positive crankcase ventilator. That's a new one and that's an old one. This is insanely heavy and I know who this is from. This is from my good friend Dean. The famous ivory adapter. The rarest kind in the wild. Loitron. Boosh. Ah. You recall, rather topically, I made a uh, battery replacement for my camera. Went on the internet and for a tenner you can just pretty much buy the whole sort of thing. And hopefully that will work out for me and I'll never have to change another camera battery again in the back. So in the mailbox you saw we had this PCV valve and a lot of you might not know or not care anything about that but it's quite interesting because if you own a car it's really likely it's got one of those in it and that one of these failing will actually cause you a lot of engine wear and a lot of extra sort of oil and fuel to be burnt. So I think it's a worth spending a little bit more time having a look at these parts and we'll have a deep dive. This, this is an old PCV valve and this is a new PCV valve and we're going to be asking the question, what is a PCV valve? If you think of your engine in your car, uh, something like that and you've got your, you've got your head here. Well, you've got your rocker covers and all that there. You've got your head here which has all your pistony things in it. And then you have your sort of sump on the bottom filled with oil and juices. Mmm, juices. And on the front of your engine somewhere you're going to have some sort of throttle body or carburetor or whatever. I'm going to say throttle body and that's the sort of thing at the front which has a big butterfly valve which I'm going to draw like this which looks kind of a bit like a turbine but it's not in the picture. Just imagine it's a flappy, flappy paddle valve. So what happens is air comes into the engine 
and it goes out through the exhaust which I haven't drawn and I'm just going to draw that as the exhaust. See the engine's going bang, 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 and that's great. Oil is splashing up, being passed around, lubricating the whole engine. They discovered that pressurising the crankcase itself was a good thing so it stops water and other stuff trying to get in because it's got positive pressure. So you've got pressure that's building up in here. You've got some sort of a valvey dude which is one of these things. Um, controlling a bypass that goes into your air system. In fact, I've drawn it a bit lamely. It actually goes here into the front because it has to be metered. Metered air because you've got electronic uh, airflow metering and things like that. So what happens is pressure increases here and when it's sort of too much, it lets the pressure out here into here and then it can just get blown out through the engine and the reason it puts it through the engine is that if there's any particles in there of oil or anything like that they can bust and it sort of comes out your engine clean and if you don't leave a pile of oil anywhere and that's really what this thing is it's a tiny little valve but the problem is when these fail they actually can uh, cause your engine to burn a lot of oil and gum up and um, you can see a picture here now of me uh, of a throttle body that I've cleaned and you can see the one one it's before how dirty and gummy it is with it's sort of stuck on marmite and then on the right how it looks nice and clean so that's because this exact valve um, isn't performing as far as I can tell um, they should sound like this nice and rattly you can see there's a spring in there and it's 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 got a basically a weight that's blobbing around and this one is it's got one in there to be honest with you but it's a bit firm and they just generally cost just a couple of quid normally this one's quite expensive for no good reason at all I mean that these are about these are on the shelf for like 40 quid and I, I got this for 15 thank you know heavens for that um, but if you look for your car it'll be something like this or a bit of plastic pipe with the valve in it just go to Hal Frauds pick it up um, it shouldn't cost too much because you'll see why it won't cost too much because not much in it. It looks pretty much like a pen, <laughs> the inside of a pen, doesn't it? You've got your spring, you've got your, your uh, basically, uh, I can tell what you'd call that, your piston, your seal. So the idea, that seat's there. So when that's seated under the pressure of the spring, like that, this is sealed. But then when there's too much pressure, like, you know, when you've got too much positive pressure, it pushes against that. And then that should allow um, the, the sort of vented gases to go up and then out through this hole to some other part of the system. In fact, um, it, I think this one actually works the other way. I think this actually it, the uh, crank comes into here and it goes through there. So uh, I might be confusing myself, but let's not worry about it. You, who cares? You don't care. I don't care. The only thing we care about is when they get worn, you need to replace them. And to be honest, if you had it in your car and it's your car's done more than you know. 30,000 miles I think you can just invest the uh, three pounds and the sort of 10 minutes tops it's going to take you to change it so go change your uh, PCV valve this week I've been eating a lot of mochi noodles and Chinese chili sauces clearly I'm hitting the Asian diet pretty hard. These noodles though are something else and pretty fantastic. If you ever get the opportunity to try some, please do. They are proper spicy and have a really great texture and taste. Don't be put off by the spiciness. After the third bag, you'll get pretty used to it. Either that or all of your taste buds will have been completely ablated by that ex extra intense chili flavor you get from this. A few months ago, one of my colleagues in the office proceeded to cause like a large bang and fill the office with smoke. We discovered that it actually plugged in a 48 volt power supply into a 12 volt device and something inside that device was very unhappy. Fortunately, it didn't take out any other equipment. However, I think it's worth having a little poke around under the hood of this thing. I have here. Dun, 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 a drive. It's one of these disk drive caddies. So if you have a look in there, you can just about see you've got the uh, SATA things. And I don't have a drive sitting on the desk to show you. But yeah, you just basically either pop a little two and a quarter inch drive in that slot or a whole three and a, is it three and a quarter, three and a half, whatever, into that one. And then you can plug this into your PC via USB and you can access those hard disks. So it's kind of handy. It's, it's really useful because it's kind of a hot swap system. You can shove your disk drives in and shove them out, do your backups, use them for whatever you're going to do, lock them in a safe. Good stuff. 
So this thing, yeah, he actually says on the bottom, for all two and a half or three and a half inch SATA drives. And it does have this DC in power supply and mm, it has that smell, you know, that burnt electronic smell. The reason is uh, the, my colleague um, set this off. I'm going to say set it off like a firework because we're in the office and there was this like kind of bang and then just psh, black smoke everywhere. And it was really lucky that it didn't set off any alarms or sprinkler system but that way. It was a dramatic. And it turned out he'd plugged in a 48 volt sort of, I think it was like a power over ethernet power supply rather than it's 12 volt or power, uh, five volt supply it was expecting. So that's why it made a little bit of a stink and it was a bit unhappy, but really lucky that it didn't blow out the PC it was connected to. Um, so that was a bit of serendipitous luck. Oh, All right, that's no good. Too fat. Oh. Never had that happen before, actually. So well jammed in that screwdriver. But what am I expecting when I open this? I'm expecting to see some uh, excellent blown up capacitors. I think that's what I would expect first. Because there's only certain things, components that will just sort of sit there and give off loads and loads of smoke. And I think electrolytic capacitors normally are the the bad boys that can do that. Right. Dum dum dum. Woohoo! Okay. So first things first, there's this sort of papery goodness all around there. So that does suggest to me a capacitor has blown up. And looky, looky there. There is a blown up capacitor, but it almost makes me wonder, hmm, is this actually repairable? It might well be. Uh, I'm not sure I'm going to bother trying to repair it right now, but let me just see how we can get this off. It's actually got weights. It's actually weighted. It's got these big old weights sitting in the base here to keep that on your desk. Oh, there we go. thought the PCB looked like it wasn't actually bolted in any significant way. So it appears there's your SATA interface and there's your SATA controller and there's your sort of really quite unhappy and it sort of unwound itself, but it's nice to be able to see that detail. Let's move all this junk out of the way. Ah, oh, hang on, what's that? That is the can. So we have a chance of actually replacing it. So what does the can say? It's a bit wrinkly wrinkly, but it looks like a 470 microfarad, 25 volt cap. And you know what? It's, it's quite interesting. You've got a linear regulator here, right? But I'm, I'm kind of thinking, you know, if that, it, there's a good chance you could replace that cap and it would be okay. But I'll just show you how a cap is made. It's obviously a dielectric, which is that papery goodness in there. And it's, you know, it's got two layers basically of whatever that is, metal and the dielectric. And it's like a kind of a battery. So let's see if we can get to the heart of this. But you can see the construction. So you've got metal, dielectric metal. Yeah, Ooh, uh, unwrapping it. Cute. And that's it. It's just exactly how you see in a sort of textbook. And they just go round, 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 round. They're the two contacts. And then they push over a cap. And you could, uh, you've seen, if you, if you look, people actually have laser cut their own where they do layers like that way. And you can just make your own. The bigger the cap, the more charge it holds. It's kind of that simple. I kind of expected more stuff, to be honest, inside it, but I'm guessing, um, you know, like I thought there's bad stuff in caps, but this is the first time I've actually seen one dismantled. I would just imagine they're a bit juicy, but maybe all the juice got burnt off it. I've had a route around and I found this. Yeah, it's a little bit different in terms of its size. And I suspect if I try to uh, fit that back in, there's going to be some difficulties. So we're just going to solder that in. Now, as I said, make sure you pay attention to the polarity of capacitors. They only go in one way. Power supply. Let's see what that does. No lights, no nothing. God, I lost this voltmeter the other day and I had to find all, I found loads of other voltmeters in the back office here, at least five others, but it's like losing your right arm when you use your, uh, you know, you have a very specific... Ow! Pardon my French. Something was very hot just then. 
Ow. This component's very hot. I'll find, show you which component it is. I suspect we're dead, guys. Bugger. I have a feeling this is now beyond economic repair. So the chip that's getting hot is this APW7080, which according to this data sheet is a synchronous step-down converter, and it can take a wide input voltage from 4.5 volts to 26 volts, output current up to four amps. So you should be able to like, you know, really have some grunt there, be able to sort of hold its own, um, but it's getting hot. So it's either it, is done for or something down the line is done for and i think it's pretty much kind of there's a 3v3 line going on here which it may well be uh feeding um but yeah i think there's too much unknowns there so it might be a nice little salvage board certainly i'll take my cap off there again um so let that be a lesson to you make sure before you plug in any ac adapter that it is the right one for the right device or you may have a catastrophic failure and one in something like this could take out easily actually take out your pc if it gets up your usb port bad news all round so thank you for watching my first episode of the back office show i know it's going to be probably a little bit clunky um, it's going to take me a little while to get used to this and sort out all the fancy graphics and sounds and make it a little bit smoother but we'll get there and uh, please let me know down below how you feel about it. If you hate it, or if you like it, uh, or just please subscribe or share if you're that way inclined. And as ever, thank you for watching.